Okay, welcome everyone. It's the first edition, first installment of Electrical Educator. Okay, let's look at the octagon boxes first. Here's our two different types of octagon boxes. Obviously they're called an octagon box because they're shaped like an octagon. The only difference between these two are the clamps on the sides here. So this box right here is designed for hanging heavy lights from ceilings. And I would only use this one if you're mounting a box on a ceiling. Because what this does is it allows us to add a lot more screws. So if you can see there's one, two, and inside of here, three, four screws that I can attach. That gives us a lot more to attach to. You can hang a, a ceiling fan from that or a heavier chandelier. This style of octagon box um, does not have that. And inside of here, if I was to attach this to the, the, the ceiling, there's really only one, two spots that I can, I can attach a screw onto. Both octagon boxes do have these spacers here. The points of the spacers um, is so that it, it keeps about a quarter inch difference in here, or half an inch, sorry, half an inch difference for when I attach the drywall. So the drywall would sit flush with the bottom of the box there. So here's the anatomy of the octagon box. Right over here, you'll see that we have two wire clamps. What those are for is the wires will come underneath there and then we'll tighten this screw and that will make sure that the wires stay inside the box and that provides strain relief so if the wires are ever tugged that they'll never pull out of what we're attached to. We also have two ground screws that come standard on these octagon boxes. Um, one of the ground wires that will be coming to this box will need to be attached to there. That's uh, making sure that we follow the bonding rules outlined in the Canadian Electrical Code. Okay, so I got the device box that we're going to be using here. This one here is a, a two by two and a half by two. So if we look at our um, our table 23 in the Canadian Electrical Code, um, you will notice that a two by two by two and a half for the we'll be using number 14 gauge wires so we'll be able to shove eight wires into this box and we'll get into box fill in a few minutes here. So here's a closer look at your device box. As you can see there's some similar components to the octagon box. There's going to be two clamps and there's going to be two ground screws as well. The ground screws sit more in the middle of the box but just like the octagon box to maintain code rules we're going to have to attach your ground wire to the ground screw as well. So what we're installing, I like to start with the device box. So the first thing we're going to do with mounting the device box is we're going to measure. I feel like an average for most households is about 140 centimeters to the top of the box. So I'll measure 140 centimeters and make a mark. Then on your device, device box, sorry not that one, this device box right here, on the sides here you have your two cleats and you have your two spacers. Now the spacers are the things that make sure that our device box is sitting out far enough so that there's space for the drywall. I put those on the outside of the stud and the cleats can be jammed into the wood. That holds the device box there so it's easy for installation. Give that box a good tug and make sure that it's in there good and tight. Okay, so next what we'll do is we'll install the octagon box. Now this one's not going to matter that much. We don't have any building plans. Normally you go off the building plans. It's either going to be on the ceiling or a sidewall. We're just going to place it up there so that we can wire it. Good and tight. All right, moving on to the wire. So for today, we'll be using some white NMD 9014-2. Color doesn't really matter. You can buy this in a couple different colors. Usually, we use white for the most common, and often, if it's uh, if it's a box going down to the panel, you'll buy a different color just so that the, the next installer will know what you're doing. So with your NMD 90. We're going to have to get it up to these little holes in here. Now this being a brand new box, you're going to have to knock out some of these plugs here. So only knock out the ones that you need. You don't need to go and knock them all out. 
use a screwdriver, then you can work it out with your hands or some pliers, and the wire will go inside of there. Before you do that, I like to space it out. So you're going to need 20 centimeters of wire inside the box. You're going to need a little bit of a service loop here. Now what the service loop is for, this is in case some of the wires get damaged inside this box, this service loop will allow us to pull some more wire in through there uh, so that we don't have to rerun the whole run. So following code rules, we're going to need a staple within 30 centimeters of that box. So something right in there. You also want to make sure that your staple is as much in the middle of that stud as possible so that when the drywallers come and start banging screws in there, they don't hit your wire. I like to use these little plastic staples. Uh, there are metal ones that are still available, but these ones seem to be becoming much more popular. And I'll do the same thing down here. Leave a bit for a loop and I'm going to need at least 20 centimeters of wire coming out of there. So at this point here now, I have cut probably a lot more wire than I actually need, but this is the fastest way to do it. So again, I'm going to need another staple there within 30 centimeters of that box. And now at this stage here, I can run the wire into the box. Maintaining that service loop on the outside. And when you're stapling, you always want to make sure that you have your box, your loop, and then your staple. There's no point putting this staple in between the box and the loop because then you can't pull it out through the box afterwards and it's just wasted wire behind the wall. At this point you can use, usually most of these run with a number two Robertson and you can tighten them up in there and make sure it's good and tight. Got my 20 centimeters sticking out there. Now normally at this stage we're kind of done. We would wrap these wires up here and stick them in there just like that, waiting for the wall to be put up. After that, we'd come back and wire all these. It's also a good idea, if you're at this stage, to mark all of these. So this one I would mark wire to light, so that I knew when I came back that that's where it's going. It's very difficult once the wall's been put up to actually know what's up there. Okay, the next stage here is we're gonna have to strip some of this jacket off this wire. Um, inside this box here, I am only allowed about three centimeters of wire of jacket inside that box, so the rest of this has to be removed. Safest way to do this, make a little cut at the bottom. This wire here, because I used a knife on it, I would cut that off eventually. Um, in case I nicked one of these wires, that could cause a problem. And then what you can do is you can grab onto this ground wire, so you see how I propped it up there. Grab onto it with some of your pliers and strip it off all the way to the back of the box. At that stage there, I can peel off this jacket and use my knife just to just to snip off the extra jacket there. Okay, so I don't know if you can see it, but there's very little wire that I'm, very little jacket left in there. The first thing I always like to do at this stage is take this ground wire and wrap it around one of these back ground screws. It's a good idea to do this clockwise, just because I'll be tightening those up, and I find if you do it clockwise, it really kind of sticks in there nicely. Counterclockwise tends to kick out. Now that's on there, and so we're bonded to the back of that box. Mm -hmm. 
Now, as I said, there's a chance that I could have damaged these wires, so I'm just going to snip the very ends off just to be safe. Okay? Next, I'm going to have to attach a switch to this. So with the insulators on, there's no way I can get to the electricity, so I'm going to use my wire strippers. This is 14 gauge wire, so I'm going to use the number 14 on the strippers. You're allowed three centimeters of wire. I wouldn't go any more than two and a half. Squeeze down, give it a twist, pop that insulator off. Okay, that one's ready. We'll move on to the octagon. On to the octagon box here. First thing we're going to do, as always, we're going to attach our ground screw, spinning that clockwise around the screw. You don't need to loop it all the way around, just so it kind of hooks around. Make sure it's good and tight. Now, in this octagon box here, we're just going to tuck that into the back. Here's a loose clamp here. We can probably tighten that up so it's out of our way. And we're left with our black wire and our white wire. So our hot wire is black, white wire is neutral. Grab ourselves one of these. It's just a basic keyless lamp holder. But what you want to notice here is that on the back, there are brass colored screws and silver screws. Those are important. Don't mix them up. How this works is the brass screws are attached to the very back button there and the silver screws are attached to the screw part. If you mix them up there's always a chance if you're not careful in uh, changing a light bulb with, uh, with the circuit still on that you could take a shock. So what I will do is I will grab my needle nose pliers and I'm going to put little hooks in these wires. So grabbing them right from the very end of the copper and giving a little twist, you make it look kind of like a fish hook. I don't know how well you can see that in the video here. But what that will do is it will allow us to wrap those around these screws. Now, you are given two brass and two silver. We're actually only allowed uh, one wire on here, uh, one hot and one neutral. Um, it's just the way it's always been done. Maybe somewhere else in the world they're allowed to hook up too. But you're only allowed one brass to the black wire. We'll loosen that off. Again, wrapping it clockwise. Now, most of these are usually your number one Robertson. And white to silver. Okay. At that stage now, we'll pinch the wires and I'm going to fold them nicely into the box and I'll have to loosen off these screws on the ends here because these are going to fit into our keyless lamp holder. Now these keyless lamp holders are made out of really cheap junky plastic. Don't over tighten them, you'll crack them. And then you're just going to have to do this whole process over again. Something like that. Now these kind of saddle kind of halfway in between here. It sort of doesn't look like it, it's like it's supposed to, but they do sit sort of in between the, the larger part and the smaller part. Um, and it's, it's mostly just how they sit in the octagon box. And how's that? Okay, now here's attaching the switch. So I've already put in my test wire down here. Um, the test wire is just a normal extension cord. Um, the only difference here is that instead of a bare copper ground, we have a green ground. And it should be uh, noted that anytime you see a green wire, it always has to be used as ground. Um, in this case right here, I'm gonna have to attach my, my two grounds together. And the fact that on my switch I have a green ground screw means that I'm going to have to attach a pigtail to that. So what a pigtail is, 
is it's just a short bit of wire and you can use anything so I just cut this off at the end of my test wire this one's probably a little short you could probably use a longer longer one here but I'm going to attach all three of these wires together so I'm going to line them up give them a little twist and then they have to be covered with a yellow wire cap. Well, I guess the color doesn't matter, but they need to be covered with a wire cap. Some people call them morettes. And there I have my pigtail right there. Now, my neutrals, I don't actually have to do anything else with these because I do need a neutral coming from my source up to my light, up to my light here. But there's no need for a neutral anywhere inside this box other than just to follow through. So in this case, because I have a stranded wire and a solid wire, I can just put them together. I'm going to snip them off so that they're the same length. And I can put a cap over top of them like that. If this was two solid wires, you would have to twist those. And we'll probably show that another time. And those can just be tucked into the box out of our way. Now to attach up our switch. First off, I always like to do the safety aspects first. So that's our ground. Loop your ground around there clockwise. And we'll tighten that up. Now, as you can see on our switch, we have two brass colored screws and two black wires, so everything makes sense. Black wires often always go to black screws, but really what we, hot wires always go to brass colored screws. So the first one we can do, and it doesn't matter which one goes where in this case, this is a normal just on off switch. It's gonna, one switch will control one or more lights. And I'll put it on there. And we'll tighten that up. Sometimes these stranded wires can be a little tricky. One thing you want to make sure is it's nice and tight and there shouldn't be any copper hanging out below the switch here. This one here needs a twist. Another way you can put a twist in the wires is a lot of these wire strippers have a loop spot in them. And you just put the wire in there give it a twist, it'll make a nice loop as well. And we'll hook that up to the switch. There you are, and we'll again tighten that up. Again, making sure it's really nice and tight and also making sure that there's no exposed wire hanging below the switch. Tuck that ground wire into the box and you probably want to make sure in this case that off is facing down and on will be up. People like it that way. Line those up but we'll tighten these screws down. The last step here would be to add our, our cover plate, and we're finished. Okay, we're ready to check it out. 